With this movie, we begin a little subsection in the animation part of this series, and that is lip syncing, actually getting audio to connect with your animated files so that your characters can talk and do all that kind of fun stuff. This is going to be a combination of several things that we've been learning. They kind of all come together in this. And then over the next couple movies, we'll be looking at more and more complex ways to animate your lip syncing that simply gives it a little higher degree of, I guess you would say, customization and personality to it. The one that we're looking at right now is flat out the easiest, fastest way to lip sync in Anime Studio Pro. Let me tell you what we're looking at here. And if you have access to the file, zero or the working files, you can go to 0709 Lip Sync Part 1. What we've got going on here, and we'll take a look at the layers area, is that we have a head bone, a bone layer. We've learned about that in some of our other movies. We also have a mouth switch layer, which we also learned about in our other movies when we were looking at the switch layer function earlier in this animation section. If you have access to the working files, you can also import, if you want to play with it, this art file I created called robot.ai. It was made in Adobe Illustrator just because it had some replication features I wanted to use really fast with it. I imported it. I applied a variable line width to it. That's the keyboard shortcut under draw. And then I went ahead and selected the teeth and the mouth and cut them out of the robot layer. Created a new layer called mouth open and pasted them into that. And the reason is I just created the entire drawing in Adobe Illustrator, but I need this mouth function to be on its own layer so that it works as we've learned within the switch layer. Now that that's been done, I simply duplicated the mouth and then moved the points around and created a mouth closed and then various states of the mouth being open. So there's closed with a little bit of teeth moving. I've intentionally made it asymmetrical so that we've got a little more personality to our robot as he begins talking. And finally, it's in the full open position. Well, why did we do that? The reason we did this is because when Anime Studio Pro begins syncing the audio with the visuals in the switch layer, it assumes the lowest amount of volume in the audio file is the lowest point in the switch layer, which is mouth closed. It also assumes that the highest or loudest point in the audio file is the mouth all the way open. So it's just a really common sense way for it to quickly and rapidly implement the artwork you've got and sync it up with the mouth file. A couple other little things to note. Earlier when we were looking at the switch layer we found out that we can do a special function called interpolated movement and that only works when you have shapes on each layer that has the exact same number of points or nodes like these teeth in every single one of these layers there's always four. The interpolated movement, and I'll double click on the switch layer now to open that option, the interpolated movement allows that to be very smoothly transitioned from one shape to another. So if there's intermediate frames it does a half step in between or three steps however many it needs to create that smooth motion. If you're working with photos or if you're working with different art files for each version and that's not uncommon when you start working with mouth shapes for the pronunciation of TH or the pronunciation of BR or F. There's specific animations or drawings you may use for that that simply have different numbers of nodes. And when that happens, you can't use the interpolation. The switch layer will just automatically swap that out real fast. And then it's just your typical 2D type of animation that way. Well, we've got interpolated animation on right now for the mouth switch layer. Let's go to the next step and bring in an audio file to do that. This happens in two steps. The first step is to come up to animation and come down to select soundtrack. I've created some soundtracks already depending on whether you're on Mac or PC, whether you would like to work with an AIF file or a WAV file, they are the same thing. I'll go ahead and select that. We'll bring it in and now we see a very rudimentary waveform that's occurring down here in the timeline for the mouth switch layer. The next step in this process is to come back, double click on the mouth switch layer, open up its preferences, come to the switch area, and then asks or you have the option to connect it to source data. 
and you need to connect it to the exact same file that we just imported. So one is for the timeline, one is for the switch layer. And you may think this is kind of a silly little bit of redundancy, but it's not. And we'll learn why in a couple of our next movies. I'll select Open. I'll select OK there. And now we can see that Anime Studio Pro has automatically added keyframes to our timeline. Let's back out a little bit. We can see with the light purple that our timeline goes only to 72 frames. We need to change that to 108, it looks like, because that's where the, the time frame or the audio file ends. So let's come over here to File, Project Settings. I'll change the end frame to 108 and select OK. Now let's go ahead and play through this and we should be able to hear it. Kind of fun stuff. It's really that fast and that easy to work with audio files and lip syncing in Anime Studio Pro. If you want the transition to occur faster between those, or I should say between the words, we kind of had that slow motion feel while it was playing. Let's take a look at that again real quickly. We can simply come back to the mouth switch layer and turn off interpolation. I'll select OK and now when we play it so that's kind of a stylistic decision you can make but that's how easy it is to begin working with audio and lip-syncing in Anime Studio Pro.